These are the stories of people. Drop it, Mr. Amalo. Doctor Amalo. That against all odds became champions of humanity. The few helping the many. This is the story of a man who changed the perception of urban spaces with only a seed. We're in an area where I have kids that tell me that they don't dream. How do you not dream? It's free. So now we have to teach people how to dream because they live in these areas that don't have no opportunity. People are like, well, you're giving people hope. And I like to say, fuck hope. Because you can't do nothing with hope but hope. But guess what you can do with opportunity? I'm Ron Finley. Some people call me the gangster gardener. Some people call me the renegade gardener. He's real, really real. He's a very kind man, and the man works hard. Good night. The depression of 08 hit my business really, really bad. I went to a grocery store in my neighborhood, and I'll never forget there was a tomato that says, maybe coated with shellac. Shellac was the stuff we put on our wood in wood shop. And then I would go to other areas and see the difference. I'm like, okay, well, why what's the difference? Why can't we have the same thing? And it just let me know that all of this was by design. And my old thing was, okay, we need to change the design. And I thought to change with my garden, you know, start growing my own food. Parkway in Los Angeles is that strip of land right before you get to the street. So it's between the street and the sidewalk. You actually own it, but the city has jurisdiction over it. I originally got a citation once I put a garden out there. So for years, I just let it go. Trash, weeds, I didn't care. And I never got a citation. But as soon as I tried to beautify it, I got a warrant for my arrest. This time, I'm like, I'm not taking it out. This is too positive of a thing. If you have a problem with it, why don't you try redesigning these communities where they uplift people rather than keep them down? And I figured it was time that this was changed because you didn't give a shit that this had trash and litter and dressers and toilets on it, but I beautify it and now you have a problem with it. So what does that tell me about your thinking about me and my neighborhood? That's the dude's stubbornness. He just, he doesn't give up when he feels it's right. Steve Lopez of the LA Times did a visit and interview. It was like, <laughs> the clouds cleared. And my whole thing was just imagine if the neighbors had done it collectively. So now you're exchanging food. You created responsibility and you created relationships in a community. If somebody writes a law, that means they can tear it up and get an eraser and rewrite it. A gardener, that's gangster. Being educated, that's gangster. Building your community, that's gangster to me. So these are the kind of message to me that these people need to hear. Urban gardening helps with the redesign in a multitude of ways. It's not just about the food again, it's about people. Now you're engaging communities. Now your people are growing and they're participating in their food. They have skin in the game. The air is better. You're changing the biodiversity of the soil in your neighborhood. You're bringing in pollinators, you're bringing in bees, butterflies, hummingbirds. You're changing the ecosystem when you put in a garden. We are part of the ecosystem, so that garden is changing us. And then the beauty factor. You get to walk out your door and experience nature every day. That's going to change you. I don't care how jaded you are. From our charter schools, that's right here on the cuts, right here on Jefferson Park, to people just meandering through the neighborhood, to folks that specifically want to come and see the garden, he's created a consciousness globally as well as locally. I probably planted 15 to 20 parkway gardens all in L.A. Do you consider yourself to be an underdog? No, that uh, underdog? By no means. I'm s super dog. Well, you know, you, you went up against, like, an institution. But uh, no, I, no, they went up against me. I'm going to show you how to take this old dresser drawer 
and turn it into a garden. There is no end to the bounty of Mother Nature. There's enough for everybody. And that's the one thing that you will learn from gardening. Most importantly, what I'm going to teach you is how to grow your own food. Legendary. In this class, what you're going to learn is how to take some of my favorite vegetables and herbs from planting to harvesting. Mint, lettuce, sage, sweet potatoes, rosemary, kale. I know a lot of people out there, you don't like leafy greens. I don't either. <laughs> Put them in your diet anyway, because this is one of the healthiest things that you can possibly eat. You're going to learn how to make the most of any patch of soil, from sidewalks to rooftops to flower pots. And I know you're asking, what the hell is compost? Compost is one of the sexiest things on the planet. This takes things out of the waste cycle. They don't wind up in the landfill. These things are really important, not only to your garden, but to the planet. I call myself the gangster gardener, because to me, having knowledge is gangster. Soil is gangster. Air is gangster as Gardens, to me, represent freedom. That's one of the reasons that I started growing food myself. And I had no idea what happened in my community and then around the world would happen just from me planting a strip in South Central Los Angeles. Legendary. We are supposed to inspire each other to wake up in and realize what's truly important. I want to bring your creativity into your space. I want you to know that you have the power to do this. Legendary. I'm Ron Finley, and this is my masterclass. Planting a garden has the power to change the world, and even you can do it. Us gardeners, we do a lot to sustain our gardens, but sustainable. See, that's old news. <laughs> because it leaves you in the same damn place. Where a big movement of the gardeners are going right now, they're going regenerative. Because regenerative gardening actually helps reverse climate change by building soil. It's like magic. During World War II, people started planting home victory gardens to support the war effort. By 1944, nearly half of all fruits and veggies were coming from backyard gardens. We're bringing victory gardens back, but this time it's for the climate. Even a small garden has the potential to impact the global crisis of climate change. Here are five ways to make your garden a regenerative climate victory garden. Ditch the chemicals, less disturbance. If you don't want it in your body, don't put it in your food. And stop turning your soil over so much. Two, keep the soil covered. Any plant is better than no plant. They protect and build the soil. Three, encourage biodiversity. Diversity is resilience. It makes America great, so it goes for your garden. Four, grow food. Food from your backyard means way fewer food miles than food shipped all the way to your grocery store. Five, compost. Make it, use it. It's a probiotic regenerative source for your soil. We can all participate by making climate victory gardens that build soil and helps reverse climate change. So plant your climate victory garden and add it to this map. And share your photos of your garden's regenerative practices. Good soil and sunshine to make them grow.